in order to digitize Percy in Simply Applique, I need to get that FCM file created. And one of the very cool things about Canvas Workspace is I know some of you don't have a scan and cut. If you have another cutting machine and you can get these shapes into an SVG file format, your cutting machine may have that ability for you to print out a calibration page and then take a picture with your phone and upload it to that cloud for that machine and it will create an SVG file from that. I don't know how to do that, but I know it can be done. Once you create that SVG file, up here in the toolbar on Canvas Workspace, there is SVG. See, it says import SVG DXF or FCM file. So if you can get the shape into an SVG, then you can import it by clicking this button right here. So I have already imported all of these and these need to be now sent in an FCM file format down to my computer. I'm going to go back down to 25% so I can see the whole mat. And I am just going to move these around so that somehow or another they kind of fit on here. It does not matter where they actually sit. And I don't even know that it matters that they are apart, you know, not touching each other. I don't know that. I'm just, I'm, I haven't played with it, so I'm not going to take any chances. Up here in this top box in the upper left corner, I'm going to highlight over this and I'm going to type Cornelius. And then you want to come over to Project. And here is your inbox with a plus, and I want to save this as another project. So remember when we started, I just grabbed M25, the body, and that was what we used. Well, I've changed the name now, and I'm going to save it as another project, Cornelius. Now I can download Cornelius. I'm going to click the download button. And again, it gives me the two options. I can either do a scan and cut transfer. We've already done that one and we've cut out our pieces and we're ready to go. So now I'm going to download the Cornelius FCM file to my PC. It says download to PC. What that means is you either need to download it to a Windows machine or you can download it to a Mac, but you need to have parallels with a Windows and OS in order to be able to use this file. So there it is right there in my downloads folder. Now I'm ready to jump into the Simply Applique. The software I'm running here is called BES4 Dream Edition by Pacesetter. It is what I call the mothership of Simply Applique. What Pacesetter did was they took the module of BES4 that creates those applique embroidery files and put it into its own little piece of software and it is called Simply Applique. It functions identically and it looks pretty much the same except up here in the corner where you have the B, you'll have an A if you're running Simply Applique. The major differences are there are more applique files in the uh, tools that are available in BES4, and in the text, you have more fonts that you can use. Uh, Simply Applique may only have Applique fonts. So, all right, so I'm going to bring in Cornelius. I'm going to click this button up here. This is like file. If you were using Microsoft Office, this would be files. I, that's what I call it. And I'm going to scroll down here to import FCM. A lot of people ask me, what's the difference between Simply Applique or BES4 and in Brilliance? In Brilliance does not allow you to import this FCM file. So in Brilliance can create applique files, but not like this. And this is the ease that I love of this to be able to use this software. So I'm just going to click import FCM. And I'm going to go to my quick access, the star over here in this menu. And I'm going to go to my downloads. And there is Cornelius right there. I'm going to open. Now, I have my Sew Along Guide, the Lori Holt Sew Along Guide for Chicken Salad open on my desk right next to me. And I'm going to go ahead and put Cornelius together. 
as best I can. Don't you know I forgot that chick beak again? I might be able to use this one, uh, but I didn't cut it. So, oh well, that's fine. I'll do it the old fashioned way. Uh, old dog, <laughs> hard to teach a new trick. <laughs> so I am going to move all the pieces that I don't need out of the way right now. I'm, I'm looking for the body and I'm gonna move all of these over here. The body, I want to come up to a range tab and I'm going to center in the hoop with the click of this button right there. All right, and I'm just gonna start moving the pieces where I think they ought to go. That looks pretty good. Now I need to identify everything so I can make sure I've got everything in the right order. I'm going to click on each one of these. This is the body. So highlight artwork, right click, rename body. I need to bring in the chick. So I'm going to file import FCM and I am going to come over here to quick access again and chicken salad is in my quick access and I need to come down to there he is right there okay let me move this these all need to be reversed so I'm gonna flip and flip horizontal there we go take this chick he is, um, let me get this out of the way. He is right under this tail and I need to rotate him just a little bit, following daddy around. Okay, he is trucking, trying to keep up with dad. All right, this looks great. Now I need to, I'm gonna rename these and then I need to reorder everything and make sure it is going to stitch in the right order. So over here in this box, this is the sequence view. And we need to get it so that everything stitches down in the right order. So I'm going to take a leg one and I'm going to move it all the way up to where it, it won't go any higher than body. And I'll just move body once I get leg one there and that will put leg one first. I'll just put this somewhere right now. It doesn't matter. Leg one, I want leg two. You hover it over the one you want it to be under. So there's leg one, leg two, now I need the beak. Cover it over the one you want it to be under. And then I need the comb. That's in the right order, that's fine, because that goes under the body. And then I think I need the body. Yeah, I think the body is next. So grab the body. And if you grab it by the word, it doesn't work. You need to grab it by the picture. So I'm going to put the body over the comb. So the body comes on after the comb. Then I need the head feathers after the body. And then I need the waddle and then the wing and then the tail. And I need to put the chick first and then the chick wing there. That's perfect. Okay, I am ready to turn this into applique. It's still, they both still need eyes, eyeballs, but this program won't turn it into applique if you've got lettering in your, uh, in your sequence. So you, you would do that afterwards. I think I need to move that waddle. And if you go to click something and you get something you didn't want, I'm going to highlight it over here. I'm just going to move it a little closer. The wing needs to go down before the head feathers. I see that the tip of the wing is just under the head feathers. So we'll put the wing body, then the wing, then the head feathers, then the waddle. Yep, that'll work. Then the tail, then the chick. Okay, that all works, great. All right, so what we need to do is control A to select all. You wanna make sure everything, all items, all everything is selected. 
we are going to, uh, I'm going to center in the hoop first. Put the whole thing in the center since we're on the Arrange tab. Now I'm going to come to the Tools tab, and I'm going to click Convert to Applique. And it converted the entire design, and the default is Satin, and I don't want that over here in the Properties box, so I'm going to hit the drop down and I'm going to click Blanket. And I'm going to um, Stitch Length. I want to leave all of this as is. I'm going to change the stitches on the feet and the beak in just a second. So I'm going to click Apply. And that changes everything to the blanket stitch. And that looks amazing. OK, I'm going to click anywhere off the bird, highlight the leg. I'm going to hold down the Shift key and click the last of the beak. and That selects just those parts right there. And I'm going to come over here to Stitch Length. I'm going to change it to 1.0. And Width, I'm going to change it to 2.0. And I'm going to click Apply. And that makes all of these stitches on these tiny parts just a little bit smaller. And I think that looks great. All right, we are ready to add the eyes. And to do that, you go to Home. And you want to go to Text. And I want Normal. And you put your cursor anywhere on the screen outside of the chicken, and that will bring up the properties. When you are choosing an eye, you want to get something that's very much like a block font. You could use a period, or you could, and if you were wanting to make the chick legs, you could use like a capital I or a small L of some sort of block font, something that does not have a serif, which is like the lines across the top and bottom of an eye. You don't want that. But when you click on siblings right here for the different kinds, if it has an O in that box, that's an applique font. You want something that is not an applique font and something that doesn't have a serif. So I'm going to leave it in siblings. I'm just going to hit the period punctuation mark on my keyboard like that. And then I'm going to get out of the text tool by coming over here and selecting the blue arrow. And that gets rid of all that. I want to scroll in with my mouse, get a little bit larger. And I'm going to use the little toolbars here whoop, to go up and down and side to side. I'm going to bring this over. I'm going to put it right here where it goes. I want to make it just a tiny, tiny bit bigger and put it where I think it needs to go. And then I'm going to right click, copy, and right click and paste. It pastes it directly on top. I'm going to move it down here and then come down to the chick. And I'm going to make it a little bit smaller for this guy because he's a little beady guy. And that's going to go right there. OK. I forgot to add in the beak for the chick. And I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I'm going to go uh, File, Import FCM. And I want to go to that beak feet little bar. That's what I'm using for these guys. And I'm just going to uh, make it a lot smaller, about half the size, and then right click copy and right click paste so it's over here you can see we've got two of them now and I'm going to grab one I just want to put it where I think it ought to go highlight this and this and if I go to tools I'll convert to applique there it did that I need to go back to blanket and apply and stitch length 1.0 and width 2.0 and click apply. And that works. Okay, so that's going to work out just fine. Now I need to move the beak so that it stitches before the chick body. So I'm just going to highlight this first one, hold down my shift key, highlight the last one, grab the pictures and hover it up over the tail, the one I want it to be after. 
So there we go. Now it's going to stitch the beak, then the body, then the wing, and then the eyeballs, and that's perfect. All right, I'm going to go File, Save As, and you can hit this paste setter right here, Files of Type. I'm saving it as Cornelius, and save it to a PES file. I'm going to save. I've already got one in there. I was playing around. Yes, I want to replace it. And we are ready now to go over to the Luminaire and stitch this out. So you can certainly save it to a USB drive, or I'm going to actually bring it into my Embrilliance program and send it over to the Luminaire wirelessly. Okay, I'm getting ready to stitch out Cornelius and the little chick. And this time I'm floating my fabric. This is the 13 and a half inch piece of fabric and I've got it cut just right and I used some KK2000. I sprayed it on the stabilizer and then I have, I marked center so that's where I want the beginning, that's where I want zero to be on the design and then I've got these pinned in the corners and on all the sides. So I am using an organ 7511 needle and that is what Brother Machines are timed with at the factory. So if you're having thread shredding problems, take a look and uh, you should have received organ needles with your machine when you bought it. I'm using Dimes Exquisite Thread, kind of a soft uh, brown goldish color. And I'm going to use that throughout except for the name and the eyes. And my bobbin is a Designs and Machine Embroidery Pre-Wound. Class A Style 15. I really like these. I like them that they're all um, filled up and ready to go and I don't have to fiddle with it. So time is many. So I'm going to go to embroidery and I need to bring in the chick feet. So I'm going to go to pocket for memory and those are right here and I'm going to put set and I know that they go down here somewhere. When you're in this screen, let me zoom in a little bit so you can see. When you're on this screen, before you touch embroidery, you're really in a large editing mode and you can move things around on the screen without your hoop moving at all on the bed of the machine. As soon as you touch embroidery and then you try to move anything around, it's going to make the, the hoop scooch. So that's just... I mean, it's just something, it's kind of annoying to have the hoop scooching around, so I like to do all my editing before I touch embroidery. Now I need to bring in Cornelius. I'm going to uh, touch Add and Memory. And I sent him over wirelessly. There he is. Oh, he was number two. Right there. I click Set. All right. The feet are way too high. So right now, the chicken is selected by, you can tell by that red box, I want to select the feet. And now my select arrows down here are highlighted because I've got more than one object. You can see I've got the feet and then I have the chicken. So I'm going to touch the next over arrow and there are my feet. I'm going to grab those. Whoop, didn't mean to do that. I'm going to click undo and I want the feet. I'm going to go into edit and uh, rotate and I've got the jog buttons down here I can move those down and move them over and bring them up that looks really good I think that's gonna look great I'm gonna tell it okay and I want to touch embroidery okay and I think this is going to go just fine. I'm not going to stitch the tack down line. I am going to stitch out the placement line for the fabric. I'm going to iron the fabric down with the heat and bond on the back. And then I'm just going to jump over the place, the tack down line, which is that second gold one right there. And then it will just uh, do the final blanket stitch. So I'm going to do this in the needle plus minus mode and this these two buttons right here are where I'm gonna jump over that placement line 
Sibley applique will not allow you to delete that stitch for some reason. If you wanted to and you have Embrilliance or some other embroidery software, I know in Embrilliance I can go in and delete that tack down line. That will allow me to do that, but I can't do it in Simply Applique or BES4. It just won't let you. So I'm just going to tell it okay. And I want to make sure I am on center. I'm going to touch the W and it's going to drop the crosshair of where it's going to stitch and begin the design. That's a little bit off center, so I'm going to go into layout and move. And now you're going to see the hoop move. That's center right there. That looks good. Okay. That crosshair will go away as soon as I start stitching. I'm going to tell it okay. And in the needle plus minus again. And I'm ready to go. So I'm just going to let this do its thing. I'm going to put it on uh, fast forward and let you guys watch it all stitch out. The design is supposed to take 12 minutes. Alright you guys, here, take a look. See how nice and pretty this turned out. Didn't that turn out just beautiful? I am loving this. This is really a lot of fun. Let me get real close so you can see how precise that stitching is right next to the fabric on every single piece. It just turned out absolutely fabulous. Alright, I'm having a great time with this. I hope you are too. 
and we'll see you next week for the next chicken. All right, we'll talk to you soon. Go sell something. Bye. Thank you.